but again, it's not where it was 10 years ago. And um, underwriting capacity consists of financial capacity because um, earlier we had um, engineer um, Gwifu talk about buying a vessel of 900 million, 900 million era. And as I said, there are vessels in the market today, $60 million worth of vessels, $20 million worth of vessels, which we insure. And um, when those vessels, if in the event that vessel should go down, that means we have to dip into you know, shareholders' funds, dip into our reserves to pay for those kind of things. So the bigger you are in terms of financial capacity, the more you can support the industry. And I think um, that's an area, one of the challenges that we face. But I know the regulator has been working very hard to see how best to improve both underwriting capacity as well as financial capacity in the industry. Um, lack of technical expertise also um, continues to explain why perceive, I would say perceive, um, because oftentimes I meet vessel owners in Nigeria, and as soon as I ask where's your vessel being insured, and I hear it's insured in London, and then I start by, okay, you've just contributed so so amount of jobs for the guys in London. How about trying to contribute this much jobs in Nigeria? And then the discussion goes around, we don't feel you guys can do this. So uh, I think it's in area of perception for those that have, you know, been confident to uh, insure their vessels in Nigeria. Um, insurance have been making good some of these claims. In fact, um, some of the biggest claims, particularly, uh, the Niger Doc talked about, um, um, the, uh, Mr. Adesso talked about working the project manager for Egina, which if you go to uh, Marina, you see Egina there. Um, the insurance industry in Nigeria today, that's an FPS, so it's largely a vessel also. It's just that it's a specialized vessel for the oil and gas. That vessel is worth uh, well over three, seven billion dollars the insurance market in Nigeria at least co contributes to a significant portion of that. And then there's been a loss. The loss is, is still being adjusted, and the loss easily is well over $100 million. And I say that the Nigerian market, Nigerian insurance industry is poised to deliver on those claims. So that's just a testament that the industry, even though it's perceived to uh, not have enough capacity, the capacity gradually has been building. It's not anywhere where we want it to be. But we know that with discussions like this, stakeholders getting involved, we can encourage locals to have more confidence in the local, local sector. Um, I also talk about experts um, identified um, operation, operating law guiding marine insurance to be updated. Um, again, the various um, remorse is here, of course, to try and enforce more the cabotage. Uh, cabotage law basically says that for Nigerian vessels, Nigerian flag vessels should encourage the use of Nigerian operators, both in terms of mining, in terms of repairs, and in terms of insurance. So for Nigerian flag vessels, we've seen that Nigerian flag vessel has been growing in the last two years, but that has not basically contributed to growth in marine insurance. So um, we see the opportunities for, for growth there. Those are basically challenges that we face. Um, quickly to crude oil sales and, and I've included transport as well. What are the two main drivers we see in crude oil sales? Crude oil is an international commodity. It's been controlled by both internal factors as well as um, external factors. External factors largely it concerns about global economic uh, uh, growth, which will lead to global, um, global growth in trade. And as, growth, as trade grows globally, economy grows globally, it has um, a snowballing effect in Nigeria as well, once we have our domestic conditions right. And um, of course, once these factors, which have been working well in the last, um, I dare say, six quarters, as the economy has been um, rebounding, things have been working well. Then of course, um, international maritime regulatory conditions also need to be um, to support. For international mines, um, my, my term, uh, sector regulations has been working well, quite frankly. Apart from the, um, a couple of weeks where um, the U.S. president have, um, you know, you know put, thrown some stick in the works with um, basically trying to protect U.S. interests. Any responsible government will try to protect U.S. interests. But U.S. is a, contributes about 20% of global economy. Um, anything that the U.S. does has the impact to, to, have to, to shock the entire market. So we continue to monitor that. And then, of course, local factors also remain important. We've had issues with FX in the, in the last two years. That has, um, the, the CBN and the government has done quite well to try and balance that. We still would like to see a single exchange rate. We know there are uh, 
even though the exchange rate seems stable now, but we still have multiple exchange rates. We like to see exchange rates, which ultimately continue to improve availability and access to FX. Um, domestic maritime regulation, and of course, the MASA is here listening. Um, um, Nigerian Port Authority as well um, listening. This um, availability of killed manpower and human capacity. Um, Mr. Anna did talk about human capacity. Human capacity is very important for any industry, and the insurance industry is not, is not immune from that as well. Um, quickly about uh, what the numbers are. I think I've shown this before. These are basically global oil demands by region, and you can see um, China as a country itself almost contributes in terms of um, or close to about 30% of developing countries all put together uh, production. But of course, we know um, China is the manufacturing hub of the world and that expert. But I think that's a challenge for us as well. Nigeria um, has all the potential to be a manufacturing hub, both for Africa and um, as well as um, we already hope for the sub West African subregion. We can also be a hub for the, for the African subregion. And um, of course, in terms of the basic things that are happening, opportunities, um, since I just want the oil price to remain at 70, oil price closed last year as far as 60, 60 dollars per barrel. Um, I think yesterday we've gone to 80 dollars per barrel. Though um, some analysts are saying it should go to 100 dollars per barrel, but I'd rather stick with the air of caution to say that possibly oil prices, depending on um, how well they manage the issue with um, the U.S. and Iran, and the U.S. pulling out the Iran deal, which has the potential to affect um, supply, supply of crude, and that might also affect price of crude. But I w still on the caution that oil prices might likely continue to over around the 70, which works well for the Saudis. They'll be planning to sell their national oil company. And at $70 per barrel, they can be guaranteed that they will get very, very good returns for it. Um, NNPC, of course, um, will NNPC jettison. Uh, NNPC has been working to um, encourage local um, operators in the crude oil lifting contract. And we've seen them do a lot of work in that. Uh, many um, local companies around the um, quite a number of companies that now have crude oil lifting license. The only area we still remain is in terms of the ship owners. The ship owners today don't um, do much in terms of crude oil transport. And the issues are all there for us. And I think I raise some of the issues as we discuss. Nigerian, um, I, I think this is a proposal for us. Is Nigerian tanker fleet sufficient to support, to sustain Nigerian export crude volumes? Uh, maybe not at this moment, but obviously uh, we need encouragement from the government to even open that area. There are, there are um, issues that are preventing um, Nigerian operators from operating here, issues of financing, which we discussed earlier, issues of capacity, issues of security. And um, those issues, as the, these issues are being brought forward and dealt with, perhaps Nigerian tankers can also begin to participate. The earlier one we talked about, we talked about export, exports for Nigeria, and we saw that crude oil contributed more than about 80% to exports, total exports that we do in this country. Now, that crude oil that's contributed to 80%, Nigerian companies don't particularly participate in the shipping. So that, you know, basically continues to open our minds to the amount of opportunity that, you know, can come up and the amount of revenue generation for the, com for the country because the crude oil will be sold anyway, but other things we are losing might be areas in terms of taxes because as, the Nigerian, as Nigerian companies begin to have big vessels that get involved in this, they recruit more people, employment numbers can begin to improve. Taxes and revenue generation, which the FIRS and customer have been working hard to improve, will also continue to improve further. So I think the issue will be to, uh, for government will be to how to balance the security risk in terms of the crude oil sales, which, because the argument about not giving um, um, opening this sector to Nigerian players may be in terms of credibility, in terms of size, and also in terms of um, ability to guarantee security of those of those crude sales. Basically, the system which the government used today, as soon as the crude gets into the tanker, it's the responsibility of the buyer. But once these things are changed, the crude becomes the responsibility of the, the ship owner. And crude is very important. If something happens, perhaps the government needs a bit more confidence that these ship owners can then make good with the deal. Because when something happens to that vessel and that crude is lost, that's revenue being lost. So, um, and that's, it, that's an area for which financial intermediation can come to play. Insurance, insurance in bigger markets, insurance comes to pay to cover this risk. 
And I think as we continue to develop, um, these things begin to come to the fore. And um, regulatory environment um, also is very important for us to, to watch out for. Um, there have been new regulations which have been introduced. Introduction of the anti-piracy and the unlawful oil law, which is still a bill, to, which is basically to safeguard you know, the waterways. That's very important. If we are going to give vessels to um, companies, the waterways need to be saved. And I think that's the bill in the right direction. The establishment of the Maritime Development Bank as well. And basically, this is seeks to improve access to long-term financing as well as insurance for potential investors. Then, of course, the amended cabotage. We will not overflow cabotage. Act. It's a very important piece of legislation. The um, like cabotage act in itself, the Coastal Inland Waterways Act, is an act that has you know the potential to affect many factors. It affects insurance, it affects um, ship owners, it affects everybody in that value chain. And I think the whole idea is to contribute to indigenous participation in this in this sector. And of course we've also talked about the petroleum um, industry bill which has been broken down into four. The government's bill is um, awaiting assent which has been passed by the assembly is awaiting assent by the by the president. And um, of course that bill in itself is meant to unlock the huge potentials that are, that that are that are bound in that in that um, sector. Now which, what challenges are we face? We holders are here, thought leaders are here and the questions are how, how well has the cabotage versus financing fund uh, performed. And I think how well it is performed, we heard earlier in the morning when the um, engineer went forward. But of course, um, we also discussed how, what we can do together as, an, as, a, as stakeholders to try and you know, improve the, the position. Um, bridging of the financing um, gap for local companies to acquire very large crude carriers, that's also there. Um, crude carriers are very expensive piece of assets, some of them running well over 20, 30 billion dollars um, worth of vessel. These are potentially high valued assets. Um, local players will need some support. Um, if these um, funds are, are, are obtained from banks, the, we all know what the interest rate is. But perhaps maybe there's an, industry, there's a, there's an area which the government can look at insurance. In developed countries, pension funds and insurance funds are available capital for long-term financing. If I give money to a bank today, I'm expecting to collect the money today. If I don't collect it tomorrow, I'd like to collect it within a year. Banking, by the nature of banking, are short-term deposits. Short-term deposits can only finance short-term projects. The kind of projects that we need, you're not going to buy a tanker for $30 million and you expect to pay it back within a year or two. You are not going to develop infrastructure in ports and expect to pay back in a year or two. Those type of financing require long-term financing. Where can we get long-term financing? We can get long-term financing from pension funds, and we can see what the pension fund is. But the pension fund is very regulated. Insurance funds is also another area which the government can look at to try and develop that sector, to encourage um, investments in the sector. And then I think um, the private oil of NNPC um, in addressing the attendant impact of selling crude on free on board as against to selling crude on the cost insurance and freight. As we know, insurance, um, our crude oil sale has largely been sold forever by free on board. Free on board basically means that the buyer is in charge of the value chain. It brings the vessels, it does insurance. Now, if you convert it to um, cost insurance and freight, that means Nigeria and local operators will be in charge of all this. And of course, who else is going to be more uh, more concerned about developing the local industry is Nigerians. The man who's buying the, who's buying the ship from China or India is not likely to give the insurances or any attendant uh, costs to any Nigerian company. He's likely to give it to. So I think that area, we've listened to the argument of NNPC. We've also listened to the argument of um, the Massa and a few other players. Valid arguments, but I think it's time for us to you know, bring these issues to the fore, to discuss with, and see how best to try and um, look for what works for us. Because once it works for us, it's going to work for the economy. If it works for the economy, it's basically also impacting on the, the gener future generations as well. Um, action plan, um, this resolving the issues of the industry doesn't lie with one set of person. Insurance companies have a role to play. Federal government has a role to play in terms of um, enacting and enabling laws. The maritime sectors also, we talked about lobbying groups and not uh, demonstration groups. Um, earlier also have a role to play in terms of educating and lobbying. And of course the role of the regulator in enforcing. I dare say that we have enough 
we have we have enough regulations in Nigeria. If we can apply a, few, a bit more enforcement, we can get some immediate mileage while we try to improve the existing laws. And I think with this, I've come to the end of my presentation, and I hope I've been able to um, deliver some 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 knowledge.